Welcome to St. Mary's on this sixth Sunday after the Pentecost. This morning's gospel lesson tells us a parable, one of the parables that Jesus told to help, help explain the kingdom of God, the parable of the sower. And this parable is perhaps the most familiar of all of Jesus's parables. It appears both in the gospel of Matthew and in Mark's gospel in very similar forms. But sometimes when we've heard the same story over and over, the familiarity tends to sort of dampen the effect. It doesn't quite have the punch that it has the first time. And sometimes these stories, these parables, require a second look, a second way of thinking about it, another way of approaching it, to see if perhaps it gives us a new insight about Jesus' message or about ourselves. As I said, we've all heard the parable of the sower many, many times before. And every now and then, when we return to the familiar passages, we find ourselves saying, well, let's hear something we haven't heard before. So how to rekindle interest? Well, how about rebranding or repackaging and renaming a product to make it more appealing? So prunes became dried plums. Diet Deluxe became healthy choice. And the radar range, that became the microwave. Sometimes changing the way we look at things gives us a new way of thinking about them. So let's try rebranding the parable of the sower and let's see if any new insights come up. Perhaps we could rebrand the parable of the sower as the parable of the careless sower. The parable describes three features of sowing. The seed on the path is devoured by birds. The seed on the rocky ground is scorched by the sun because it has no roots. And the seed sown among the thorns is choked. Some of the seeds fall on good soil and bring forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. In the first nine verses, it sounds like Jesus is referring to himself as the sower and the seeds as his teaching. But we could also interpret God as the sower, since God is the source of all of Jesus' teaching. Jesus is a careless, extravagant thrower, sower. If he is so worried, why does he let his teachings fall on a path that's rocky? And why did he sow it in the thorny ground? Perhaps we could also think of this as the parable of the good soil. In Mark's account of this parable, it concludes with the seed that fell on the good soil yielding an ever-growing harvest. Mark says of the seed that fell on the good soil that it grew up and increased and yielded 30 and 60 and 100 fold. In Matthew, it sounds like even with good soil, some individuals bear more fruit than others. Other seeds fell on the good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. It sounds like not everyone makes equal use of their opportunities to yield an abundant harvest. Mark's version, written in a time of persecution, focuses on comforting the vulnerable young community. A miraculous harvest of the seed can come even in adverse circumstances. Matthew, written several decades later to a mixed community of Jewish and Gentile Christians, highlights the need for the individual not to rest on their religious heritage as Jews or on their freedom from the law as Gentile Christians, but to bear a harvest from the seed that falls on their own soil. Each person needs to be a doer of the word, and not just a hearer. Lastly, perhaps we could think of a, this parable as the parable of the miraculous harvest. Biblical, biblical scholar John Dominic Crossan emphasizes that it is not so much the size of the harvest that counts, but the fact that it happens at all. However big or small the harvest, against such opposition, there is a miraculous quality to it. It is a gift whose graciousness and surprise 
are meant to make us think of the kingdom of God. By his view, we ought to rebrand the parable as the parable of the miraculous harvest. In the parables of Matthew chapter 13, Jesus reminds the disciples of the exceeding value of the kingdom and the necessity of total commitment to it. The seed parables point us to hidden realities whose power and activity will one day be manifested. They remind hearers and readers of Jesus whose power was hidden on the cross, glimpsed in the resurrection, and is now growing steadily in the world despite the appearance of initial failure and repeated repetitions of the church's ministry and message. Matthew, as well as Mark, uses the seed parables to define discipleship as hearing, accepting, and bearing fruit, following the way of Jesus that yields an abundant harvest. Says biblical scholar John Donahue, the miracle and mystery of growth provide a polyvalent cluster of images which evokes God's power and graciousness in all areas of life. The parable of the careless sower, or the miraculous harvest, or the good soil, which do you pick? Which speaks to you? Which reading touches your heart? Which will let you hear something we've never heard before? I want to thank my friend and colleague, Alice McKenzie, for her thoughts this morning on the parable of the sower. Let us pray. O oh Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen.